Welcome to WMNF 88.5 FM and WMNF.org. You're listening to the Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. Before we get started, I want to remind you that the candidates for U.S. Senate in Florida will debate tonight, and you can hear it live on WMNF. We'll broadcast the debate between Marco Rubio and Val Demings on our HD3 channel, The Source, from 7 until 8 o'clock tonight. You can listen on an HD radio, on the WMNF app, or on WMNF.org. A search committee at the University of Florida recommended only one finalist for one of the highest salaried state positions, that's president of the University of Florida. That recommendation is Republican U.S. Senator Ben Sass from Nebraska. And since that announcement, there have been major protests on campus, both against Sass and really against the process that's happened that, that brought him there. Our guest on the show today has some insight on all that, so I hope you stay tuned to hear why her organization is concerned about SAS, and maybe you can weigh in by calling 813-239-9663 or by emailing dj at wmnf.org. You can also text 813-433-0885. If you do text, please be sure to sign your text. Bryn Taylor is the co-president of the Union for Graduate Assistance, UF Graduate Assistance United. Welcome to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Bryn. Thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate you coming on. A lot of people are really concerned about this topic, and uh, this is the first time we've been able to explore it in depth. So I hope that people get to tune in and to weigh in, and we'll be able to hear what you have to say about it. So thanks so much for coming on. So before we get to Ben Sass specifically, why don't you let people know what is GAU and who does it represent? Mm -hmm. um, so GAU is Graduate Assistance United, like you so kindly introduced, and we are the Union for Graduate Assistance on campus. So um, once you enter grad school, you can either um, just do pay your tuition and complete the degree, um, or you can be a graduate assistant, which means you work for the university, but you also um, are a student pursuing a degree. So um, I think pretty much every doctoral student at UF is a, a graduate assistant, which means they do research assistance um, or teaching assistance. And um, about some master students are, but altogether we represent about 4,400 graduate students at UF. Again, our guest is Bryn Taylor, co-president of the Union for Graduate Assistance, UF Graduate Assistance United, or GAU. And the GAU hosted a protest um, a week ago yesterday, last Monday. And we have some audio that was recorded by the Tampa Bay Times in which you can hear people chanting, hey, hey, ho, ho, Ben Sass has got to go. So the rest of the show, we're going to talk about Ben Sass and about you know what, what this protest is all about. But I want to give people a sense of what your union is is uh, saying and what the protest is all about. Here's a little bit of the audio from, from that protest. So we're hearing audio from that protest. It sounds to me like hundreds and hundreds of people. Were you there and what? how would you describe the mood there and how many people were there? What was it like? Um, yes, I was there. Um, it was, I would say, a very empowering experience overall. There was, um, I've seen estimates of 300, but I'm not actually sure how many people um, entered into the building, but we were able to overwhelm the forum they were having um, and really take back the university for our messaging. And the forum that you took over, I think eventually they they did it in a different room and it was broadcast to people. And just so for people to know, once we um, once we're done with our interview with Bryn later in the show, I'm going to play some audio of Ben Sass answering questions from the faculty Senate president. Uh, no, sorry, the faculty. Yeah, I think that's her title, the faculty Senate president. So we'll hear that in the second half of the show. But so let's get now to the meat of why you're. What are some of the reasons that the GAU is concerned about? about Ben Sass being the only finalist, one of the things that's been put forward in the media is that Sass has been criticized by people who support LGBTQ rights. He was asked about same-sex marriage in that forum we were just talking about that was hosted by the UF Faculty Senate. In that, in that um, forum, which we'll hear later, Oberg, he said, Obergfell is the law of the land. America's not changing. 
he's referring to the Supreme Court ruling that allowed same-sex marriage. He said, I don't see any movement at the, this university to have any discussions of changes. So that was his attempt to tamp down some of the criticism that's been lobbied at him about his stance on LGBTQ rights. So two questions. One is, what was your understanding about his stance on LGBTQ issues going in? And were your, was your mind changed by what you heard in his response? Um, yeah, I mean, as soon as they announced he was the sole finalist, quote unquote, um, I mean, a coalition of people and organizations came together pretty quickly. I mean, a lot, I would say most of the UF community is pretty outraged um, by this selection and the whole selection process. So um, we, GAU, organized a protest along with Young Democratic Socialists of America, the UF chapter there, the Union for Campus Workers, the Union for Faculty, um, a few other student groups like College Democrats and Planned Parenthood Generation Action. So it was a whole um, group of us coming together to uh, basically stand up against his appointment. Um, so he, I mean, I did not know much about Ben Sass before this, uh, before they made the announcement. Um, but I mean, it's pretty easy to find information about him since he's a sitting U.S. Senator. Um, and yeah, they want to say, Rahul Patel on the Board of Trustees wants to say that his record as a senator is completely divorced from how he will behave um, as president of the university, but it's not possible to do that. Um, you, How you vote as a senator is a re reflective of how, what you believe as a person, and your beliefs are always going to shine through into all your decision making. Um, so yeah, we were all very disturbed. No, I don't believe him when he says it's not going to influence his decisions or he is um, in a completely different mindset from when he was a senator or something like that. Um, no, I don't believe that. And even if he want, wanted to be that way, I mean, I feel like it's um, not possible for him to, I feel like he's going to unintentionally, even if he uh, claims to be intentionally unbiased. We're speaking with Bryn Taylor, who is co-president of the Union for Graduate Assistance, the UF Graduate Assistance United, GAU. That group is concerned that Ben Sass, who is a sitting senator, as she mentioned, was chosen as the only finalist for the next president of the University of Florida. I want to remind people that you're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. And we're talking about some of the opposition that's happening to the nomination or the, the announcement that Ben Sass is the sole finalist. So we've talked about LGBTQ issues, and we can bring that up more in, as we go on if you'd like. But another concern that came up during the forum that, that Ben Sass was involved in is some of the faculty asked him questions about the Stop Woke Act in Florida, which has to do, it's called the Individual Freedom Law, but it's commonly called, called Stop Woke. It deals with the teaching of things like race and history. It's called HB7 in Florida. And according to uh, WUFT, the radio station, Dr. Pasha Agos, who is an assistant instructional professor at the William and Grace Dial Center at UF, said, I wasn't satisfied with his response to the question about HB7. And he said uh, he didn't specify how he, meaning SAS, was going to balance academic freedom under the law, maybe because he's new and doesn't know his plan yet. So how would you characterize the concern that graduate students have and others at the university have about how Ben Sass might implement the Stop Woke Act at University of Florida? Yeah, um, graduate assistants, faculty members are extremely concerned about HB7 in general. Um, it was one of the reasons why during the listening sessions, um, during the presidential search process, so many people said that we do not want a political choice. We do not want a political um, figure in as head of the university because the influence of the state on UF has been huge uh, for the last year, especially. Um, and faculty graduate assistants are feeling very vulnerable and very unprotected by university admin from um, the state's attempt to basically outline what teachers can and cannot teach in higher education. Um, so we 
wanted somebody who was going to stand up to the state and say, no, teachers are going to be able to teach what is correct and what is appropriate for their field, no matter if it's offensive to your political viewpoints. Um, I mean, basically, everyone is very concerned that he's not going to be that person to stand up to the state especially since a lot of people are thinking the state intervened in this whole presidential search process. So it's all, it hasn't quelled anyone's fears about um, the politicization of UF and it's not making anyone feel very safe in terms of what they can and can't teach in the classroom. So that professor who I quoted earlier from the WUFT article, when he said that he SAS did not specify how he was going to balance academic freedom under the law, you that's you still have that concern. Um, yeah, very much so, because no one knows right now how it's going to be implemented. There's talks of um, it'll be like penalties for violating HB7 are going to be like fees to the university or like lawsuits to the individual like there's so much unclear about how this law is going to be implemented at all um and yeah it's even more unsettling that he doesn't even have a plan for how to protect against that but why would he because he's from nebraska I want to remind people that our guest is Bryn Taylor, who is co-president of the Union for Graduate Assistance at the University of Florida, the UF Graduate Assistance United. That group is concerned that Ben Sass was chosen as the only finalist for the next president of the University of Florida. And we are going to take your calls later in the show as well, 813-239-9663. You can text 813-433-0885, or you can... Uh, email us at dj at wmnf.org. I have a couple of emails that have already come in and texts, but I'm going to hold off on those for a second because I want to go back to something that you were talking about a minute ago, Bryn. In a press release that outlined GAU's concerns about SAS, you point out that the University of Florida community is still recovering from last year's academic freedom scandal from continued censorship and other politically motivated actions. So let's take those in order. For people who don't remember, and we're, you know, we're a couple of hours away from the UF campus, this might not be in the forefront of the minds of people at, at in the Tampa Bay area, but set it, who, what set in motion the academic freedom scandal at the University of Florida and what ended up happening? Um, I mean, so the biggest thing that's happened, that there's been several things that have happened, um, but the biggest thing was that UF prevented um, three, I believe, faculty members from testifying in a state court case because the state of Florida was the defendant. Um, they were asked to give expert testimonial um, testimony and basically UF administration denied them from doing that, which has never been done before. Um, so that set off a whole level of concern. The Union for Faculty got really involved in, in that case, um, and they were eventually allowed to, but it took a long time. Um, the Board of Trustees addressed it at their meeting. It was very weird and uncomfortable. They were very defensive about the whole thing, and um, it was obviously a mistake to do that. Um, so that was the first set of things. And then they um, there was some COVID-19 researchers on campus that um, had data on COVID-19 numbers and spread in Florida. And UF admin instructed them not to release that data because it went against Florida's narrative for COVID-19, the state of Florida's narrative for COVID-19 in Florida. Um, it's been one thing after another, pretty much, um, and it just feels like this is just one more thing to add on to the list. And the university investigated this these claims of academic freedom. In general, mm -hmm. what were the conclusions of that investigation? Right, and the problem with these internal investigations is that they're investigating themselves. So they set up this group of people, who no one knows who it is, um, to investigate these issues and find out if there was like political intrusion or whatever have you but it's people the board of trustees at the end of the day is picking and the board of trustees is the people who incited this decision in the first place so of course they're never going to find anything suspicious these um the the 
um, task force they chose to to handle this did not find anything um, credible. But I mean, the way they they look for uh, violations is through like FOIA request, requests and things like that. And I mean, these kinds of shady dealings are not happening over UF's public server, like they're happening behind back doors. And yeah. Our guest is Bryn Taylor, co-president of the GAU at UF, the Graduate Assistance United Union. And that group is concerned that U.S. Senator Ben Sass was chosen as the only finalist for the next president of the University of Florida. And I want to focus on that part now, that he was the only finalist. We're going to get into the process of how he was selected and so forth. And I want to remind people that you're listening to WMNF Tampa. It's 1021 in the morning, and I'm Sean Canan. This is the WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. So the process for selecting the president of a state university in Florida used to be in the sunshine. We knew who the candidates were, and in some cases, we could watch the interviews. But Florida's SB 520 now provides privacy for university presidential applicants during the selection process. So what has changed? What specific things have changed in the last few months even? And how has that affected the process? Right. So when they started this presidential search process, um, like before they even did the listening sessions, which is where they just basically held a bunch of forums for different populations that you have like graduate assistants, staff, um, faculty, things like that. Um, they said we will be, they have it, I have a screenshot of <laughs> on their website. They said we will release at least the names of two finalists um, towards the end. And uh, that's when we can decide who the new president will be together. And it was uh, normal and that's how it's pretty much always been done. There's usually two or three finalist names, um, and then you know, community can weigh in at that point. Um, but this time there was just the one, <laughs> which is already problematic. Um, but they have said that essentially the 12 finalists that they chose originally, um, none of them agreed to compete for the position in the sunshine. Um, so I... I assume, I guess, based on their narrative, that is the biggest change is that I guess candidates finalists don't have to agree to um, having their name released. Um, but in my opinion, you said this was how the, the situation was going to work. Like, I don't feel like the finalists, I don't feel like UF should have to compromise for the finalists. I feel like finalists should have to compromise for the UF community. Um, and frankly, if they don't want to compete for the position, you had 700 applicants find three others that want to compete. I want to remind people that we're speaking with Bryn Taylor, co-president of the Union for Graduate Assistance, UF Graduate Assistance United. And we're talking about Ben Sass being chosen as the only finalist for the next president of the University of Florida. And to provide a little bit more insight to the process that you're talking about right now, here's a note that was sent around by the chair of the UF Faculty Senate. And we are going to hear more later in the show from Dr. Amanda J. Phelan. She's also on the UF Board of Trustees. So here's part of what she wrote with, I, I'm presuming she had insight as part of the selection committee. She said, the selection committee did not choose to pick a sole finalist. A sole finalist was picked because none of the top candidates were willing to stay in the pool unless they were the sole finalist. In other words, none of the top candidates, all of whom were high profile leaders, were willing to compete for this position against two others publicly for 21 days, which is what the new state law requires. If the committee had chosen more than one finalist, none of them would have remained in the pool and there would have been none, no finalists. So that is the word from Dr. Amanda J. Phelan kind of backing up what you were saying, Bryn. So that sounds to me like some qualified candidates were eliminated for the only reason just because of how they have, that they would have been impacted by these new state rules in Florida of interviewing finalists for presidential searches. Um, yeah, it seems like it. Uh, my biggest question, though, is like why the finalists have to be high profile figures? Uh, why can't it be someone who's already within the UF community um, that understands how the university works, um, aligns with Gainesville's larger values? Um, why does it have to be someone who has that concern in the first place? 
Our guest is Bryn Taylor, co-president of the Union for Graduate Assistance, UF Graduate Assistance United, GAU. And I'm going to read just a couple of texts that have come in right now. Uh, first of all, um, Gary, who um, Gary says, thanks to your guest for speaking out as a UF graduate. I'm deeply concerned about this issue. The board of trustees are all mega donors of Ron DeSantis and are definitely doing his bidding in all UF policies. Gary finishes by saying academic freedom is definitely on the ballot this year. Vote appropriately. So thank you, Gary, for that comment. Um, going back to Bryn now, do we know who makes up the UF presidential search committee? Um, yeah, it's a whole list of of people that do. So the you have um, a lot of the board of trustees. You have uh, Amanda Fela, who's faculty center president. Um, Lauren Lamasters is the student body president. She's on it. Um, there's a staff member. I think um, like football staff um, and. There is a faculty member as well, besides Amanda Palin, I believe. Um, but it's comprised of a, a few other people that I'm not sure how they're integrated with the university. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much who who comprises the search committee. Um, they pick new people every year. There's some players that say the same, but um, for each one, each time they have a new president, they generally pick a new crop of people. We wanted, we really wanted a graduate assistant on that search committee um, because there, there is none uh, right now, um, but they did not grant that to us. <laughs> Our guest is Bryn Taylor, co-president of the Union for Graduate Assistance, the UF Graduate Assistance United, GAU. That group is concerned that Ben Sass was chosen as the only finalist for the next president of the University of Florida. David writes in, he says, I know there's a lot of controversy about Ben Sass, but I honestly think he'll be good at the job and help raise the university's profile. I think we should give him a chance. I both work at UF currently and an alumnus. I bet Sass will be great at fundraising since he's already got some fundraising experience as U.S. Senator. And David concludes by making a joke. He says, nonetheless, I think the graduate students need a better catchphrase for their protest, don't sass me. So those are those are David's thoughts out there. And Bubba writes, I find it interesting that Jeff Brandis, he's a state senator from the Pinellas County area, who says the law keep keeping university presidential searches secret was not used as intended in this case. He never thought it would lead to a sole finalist. So Bubba asks, what does your guest think about those remarks? Um, yeah, so I'll start with the the first one. Um, I've written down, don't sass me. I will definitely use that. Um, but in terms of fundraising, I mean, UF is very good at fundraising as it is. The Grow Greater campaign raked in four and a half billion dollars, capital B, billion dollars um, in, in donations and endowment and things like that. And I mean, they're, they're plenty, plenty good at raising money right now. Um, in terms of his experience, I mean, I uh, I disagree that he'll be a good university president, obviously. Um, he's spent the last seven years in the Senate, which is longer than he's ever spent as a university president. His only other academic experience is being president of a small Lutheran university, um, private, 1,400 students. 1,400 students is about three classes at UF. Um, he does not have the experience of how of dealing with the state and a state controlled university, which is a whole other ball game. UF has crazy prestige as it is. We're already a top five university, considered best university in Florida. Um, we, I, I think personally, this is going to take us down because a lot of people are reading this as a political choice, as a political appointment, and a lot of people are seeing UF now as DeSantis's personal playground. So, no, I'm not. Um, I'm not how should you not share your optimism um in terms of what Brandis said I mean yeah you uh you messed up by writing that law sorry like I'm sorry this wasn't how you thought it was going to be implemented but it is so um I'm really hoping that he's right when they say that they're going to edit the law in the future um but I don't know why anyone ever thought taking anything out of the sunshine was a good idea our guest is Bryn Taylor, co-president of the Union for Graduate Assistance, UF Graduate Assistance United, GAU. 
That group is concerned that Ben Sass was chosen as the only finalist for the next president of the University of Florida. And I'm going to play just a 13 second soundbite here from a reporter from the independent Florida Alligator. So the search committee, as we've talked about, was accused of a lack of transparency in the job search. Students and staff also spoke out against his previous stances on same sex marriage, that Sass's previous stances. So Christian Casal is a reporter with the independent Florida Alligator student newspaper in Gainesville, and he spoke last week on the Florida Roundup. He said protests over SAS were linked to his past opposition to abortion and to marriage equality. So here's that reporter and just a 13 second soundbite that you can listen to. maintain the institution of the family that, you know, babies need one father and a mother. And, you know, that didn't play well with a lot of, you know, these young activists who, you know, a, a majority of the people protesting were members of the LGBT community. All right. So, Bryn, we're going back now to what we were talking about at the beginning, maybe is the, op the initial opposition to specifically to Ben Sass and his positions that he's taken when he was a U.S. senator, you know, in the last, uh, I guess it's 12 years or so that he's been a U.S. senator. I might have that wrong, but um, he's a sitting U.S. senator. And so there's been opposition to some of his positions. Um, we're going to let you go in just a minute or two before we play some of the sound that, that Ben Sass was talking uh, when he was on campus. Any last thoughts about Ben Sass and about the process and what are the next steps for Gainesville? Do you think he'll be the next president? Mm -hmm. um, We're very concerned he'll be the next president, but if the Board of Trustees Presidential Search Committee continues to go forward with it, then they will be in obvious opposition to the will of, I would say, the majority of the UF community, um, and that's on them. Um, I mean, we're going to continue to protest. We're going to continue to be at his events, Board of Trustees meeting November 1st, where they plan on talking about this issue, setting up the interview. Um, so we'll be there. Um, we're not going to stop until there is some kind of justice and equity in this search and that voices are heard in the UF community. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Bryn. Thank you so much for having me. Bryn Taylor is the co-president of the Union for Graduate Assistance, UF Graduate Assistance United. They have questions about ben or Senator Ben Sass being the only finalist for the position at the University of Florida president. You are listening to WMNF Tampa.